Hello, everybody, and welcome to our very first Talent Talk Live. My name is Nelly Valinden, and I am your host today. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well. I am joined today by uh, employer branding expert Yves Pilet, who will be uh, introducing himself in a few minutes. Before we get started, though, I'd like to encourage you to say hi to us in the comments on LinkedIn and let us know where you are watching from, because we are very curious to know where everybody is uh, tuning in from. Now, for our um, program uh, this episode, we are going to talk about employer branding, of course, with Eve. For the next 20 minutes or so, we will um, be discussing employer branding, its importance, how you can strengthen your employer brand, and we'll also be uh, talking about uh, EVP. Now, um, by the end of this episode, we'll have about 10 minutes uh, to answer as many of your questions as possible. That means that if during this episode you have a question or a thought or some feedback, please share it with us in the comments and we'll get to them by the end of the episode. Now, Eve, I think it's over to you. Uh, first of all, good morning. Good morning, Neely. <laughs> How are you? I'm great, thanks. How about yourself? I'm good, I'm good. I'm actually quite excited about this. Uh, but before we get started, um, I'll give the mic to you and uh, I'll let you say a few words about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've been working on employer branding for the last 15 years. I've did a lot of research on the topic. Uh, I wrote a book about it. Uh, I'm currently um, exploiting my new uh, organization, Zuiderblau, which is a network of different experts helping other organizations, well, discovering what their employer brand is about and developing strategies in order to strengthen their employer brand. Um, and personally, I think it's one of the greatest topics alive because it's about connecting organizations thinking about what HR needs and how marketing and communication can work together in order to bring a strong employer brand home. Yeah, well, thank you very much for that introduction, Eve. Uh, I think that we actually can get started now and dive into um, my very first question, which is a bit of a basic question, but I think it's good to start with it. And that is, um, can you explain uh, to us as uh, simple as possible what employer branding is and why it matters so much? Um, well, that sounds specifically like a simple question, but it's, it can be quite elaborate. Uh, if you want to give a short answer, it's about being attractive as an employer. So really thinking about why should I work at this specific organization um, and getting more into the aspect of is this important and why should I give this attention? It's very much about differentiating yourself from your competitors because employees as such have a choice where they want to work. Not everybody wants to work for the same organization. So employers should really think about what makes them special. Why should someone try to work at their organization? So in order to attract and retain the right people. So I think that starts then exactly with um, organizations asking themselves the question first, right? Why are they um, a great organization to work for? Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. It really demands a specific view of the organization itself. Uh, in the old days, let's say 30 or 50 years ago, um, most employers didn't really have to think about why are we here as an organization? What is really specific for us as an employer? Because they had a lot of choice. There was an abundance of employees possible to work at their organization. Um, but the last 10, 10, 15 years, the structural labor market um, tight, tightened up and organizations really had to think about, well, what kind of specific skills do we need? And employees had a lot of choices to work from wherever they wanted to work. So they really had to set themselves apart. Mm -hmm. They really had to work off, and to put it in a simple words, they had to look in the mirror and explain to themselves what makes us special. Why should somebody work at our organization? And why not at my neighbor, even though we make the same kind of products and services? 
So can you give an example of that, Eve? Can you give an example of how organizations uh, differentiate themselves from one another? Um, yes, well, just think about any regular organization you want to think about. For instance, um, you could work uh, if you have the capabilities to work for, uh, let's say, Google, where you have to have certain specific aspects that really makes you want to work at Google themselves. Um, or you could work at, for instance, uh, Talentsoft. Mm -hmm. So both organizations are active on a, an internet platform. They build things, they have different salespeople, but why should I want to work at Google? Because it's more famous, or why should I work at Talentsoft? The, the, the software they use is maybe comparable, but your colleagues might be quite different from the colleagues that work uh, at Google. And maybe management is quite different. Um, explaining what their vision is uh, can be very different from something that Talentsoft wants to create in order in comparison to Google. Mm -mm. Yes. Um, now, I think something that's interesting to take a look at as well, Eve, is how can organizations strengthen their employer brand? So let's say they have already a very clear image of who they are as an organization, what they have to offer as an employer to their employees and to candidates. Um, but they are looking at ways to strengthen their employer brand. I can imagine it's something that's becoming more and more important, especially now in these uh, unusual times. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, the, the first thing is that you really should know what makes yourself different from your competitors. So if you want to attract certain target groups, you have to uh, analyze the specific needs you want to attract in your employees. So even though you think you might be an interesting employer, so you're, you, are, you think you are perceived as a specific employer, that should be matched and looked at from the view of the possible employees that can work at your organization. So your vision, what you have as an organization, uh, should match with the current image you project. So you have the cur current image <clears throat> compared to the vision you want to perceive as an employer. Now, the most crucial aspect is the third aspect, is your identity. And what you usually see is that there's a big difference between the perceived image an organization wants to exploit. Let's say, as Talentsoft, we are a very attractive uh, employer. But do the employees really think that Talentsoft is an interesting employer or not? How large is the difference between that, uh, that gap? And you want to close that gap because if you're attracting new employees, they get a specific image of the organization they want to work for. But as soon as they start working for the specific organization, it should match their expectations. If it doesn't, they will start to look for a different employer as a consequence. Yeah. So it's about keeping your promise, really, isn't it? That's one thing, yeah. And building on that promise, you should really think about what is your strategy. And your strategy is basically built on your employer value proposition. So what is your proposition internally as well as externally towards the market? And if you have figured out what your employer value proposition is, you should think about communicating it internally and externally through the right channels where your target groups are. You can use uh, aspects like your persona, so it really can give you a current image of with which kind of target groups you really want to attract. Um, and you should always evaluate what your uh, strategy really delivers you. So I've put this together in a methodology which is called the Blueprint Methodology. It's based on thinking about what your current status of your employer is, which is called the search phase. Then formulating your strategy, which is called the think phase. Then act upon your strategy, the act phase, and mm -hmm. evaluate what, your, uh, what, what you've really wanted to achieve, the check phase. And now the input you get from that check phase should be able to give you insights on what kind of KP KPIs are you able to uh, fulfill or not, and what should you adjust in your strategy. 
All right. Um, yes, so you now mentioned it uh, briefly already, Eve, but it was also one of the questions I'd like to uh, uh, okay. ask you uh, because you already talked, of course, about the employer value proposition, but perhaps um, it would be good to give a quick reminder of uh, what exactly that is, the employer value proposition. Mm -hmm. Well, the employer proposition is uh, basically the answer to the question, who am I as an employer? So you can say, well, we are producing uh, different kinds of objects or we are active in the e e IT market, uh, we have a platform, but who are you as an employer is not the same as the kind of products or services you deliver. You could be an uh, employer that is very open or very strict or is very eager to encourage people to develop their own personal skills or not. It really depends on your leadership style. But answering the question, who are you as an employer, is a crucial one. And in order to do that, you should do the proper research. And you should use different brand values in order to position yourself relatively towards your competitors. So even though you might be active in the same sector, let's say uh, Talentsoft and Google, the, the same example, uh, which is the IT, uh, Talentsoft might even be more, let's say, an open organization or a more uh, top-down focused organization and in in relatively towards Google. And you should use that in your communication to explain to your current and your potential employees what makes you different from uh, your competitors. Yes, and so uh, something else I think uh, that uh, could be interesting is how do you see the role of HR in this Eve when it comes to employer brand, employer value proposition? I think that could be very interesting for our audience as well. So what role uh, could or can HR play in that? Uh, well, I think HR is crucial in developing uh, and maintaining your employer brand, but I don't think it's just the, the single uh, department that should take care of the employer brand. Um, most organizations, place employer branding um, towards the HR department. Um, but in order to communicate your EVP properly, you should be able to explain to marketing and communications and the channels they should use, what the message is they want to bring out to the target groups. So marketing communications is equally important. Um, but in order to make an employer brand successful, you should convince higher management and especially the CEO why employer branding is important. Because if you want to position yourself as a certain employer, if you want to be able to attract the right people to fulfill your business needs, you will have to be able to convince management that employer branding is crucial. So yes, HR is a very important part of de developing and bringing uh, employer branding home. But marketing communications and especially management is important to make employer branding successful. Yes. So uh, in order, yes, in order to, to make it successful, you really need basically everybody in the organization to be involved. I can, I can imagine that here it's very important the role that managers play as well, because obviously they have their teams uh, and the people working in their teams. So I can, I can imagine managers have a bit of a, yeah, not, not an evangelist role, but that they play an important role. So how um, can organizations go about that? Or how can HR perhaps ensure that? Is, is that through coaching, for instance, or how does that work? Um, yeah, that, that's one option. Uh, the first thing you have to figure out is, uh, is there a difference between what management, higher management and uh, middle management and the people on the work floor, let's say the employees, uh, want to achieve? What do they think is important? Uh, maybe management thinks it's important to create a vision or to um, establish ourselves in certain markets. So to develop our new products and make our employees innovative in order to sell new products. But maybe employees are thinking about being innovative and developing themselves, but they think the most crucial aspect is working closely with the right colleagues in a team. But that's a different kind of focus. The, yeah. the idea is that management and employees should talk to each other and not just based on 
in structured talks, but really have an open mind towards each other and explain what is important. Um, of course, an organization wants to move forward, uh, specifically at, in the aspect of innovation, but employees will have to uh, be heard as well. It's about connecting with each other on a human level. Mm, yes. Um, now, I have one more question uh, for you, Eve, before we can go to the audience questions. So uh, I'm turning myself to you, our audience, uh, one more time. So if you have any kind of question uh, about employer branding, employee value proposition, or anything related to this topic, do not hesitate to ask your question in the comments. And then after the next one, um, we'll get to the questions and um, we... Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get answering them. So, um, Eve, my last question for you is, uh, what is the role of credibility uh, in employer branding? Now, you touched on this very briefly, I know, um, when we started, but uh, could you perhaps say something about that? Yeah, um, when you think about the subject of employer branding, um, you easily start talking about, so what, what is the proper methodology? What kind of processes do we have to use? Which departments are responsible? Um, and all of these aspects are, let's say, the fundament on which you build your employer brand. But the higher goal is to be able to be credible. If you're not credible, if you create a certain image, let's say a better image than what, you're, what it's really like to work at your organization, um, you will lose your employees. So, empl so being credible is crucial. And it's an easier said than done. Um, when we think about HR, uh, about marketing communications, and about management, all of these departments have their own language, have their own skill set, mm -hmm. uh, and have their own vision. And that has to be merged into one vision in order to create a strong employer brand strategy. And in order to make that credible, in order to make sure that there, the gap between the perceived image and the identity that exists within organization is as small as possible, organizations have to be credible. They have to be able to talk each, to each other, to be open, to really connect to each other. And yeah. credibility is just really key to make an employer brand successful. Yes, I think that is very well said. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Eve, um, now I think perhaps before we uh, are going to have to wrap up, uh, we can do one more question. Um, and that is a question, um, let's say as an organization, you are really in the early phases of uh, starting to think about uh, your employer brand and how you want to position yourself. So Eve, let's say that's the case. And I want to get started on that. Uh, as of tomorrow, where do I start as an organization? Can you perhaps give us the very first few steps um well the most the, one of the simple I, things you could do is uh, just uh type in your organization name in google mm -hmm. and see what pops up so how am i perceived uh, as organization x as an employer you will get all kinds of results this isn't just a, this isn't a real uh research thought out methodology but it gives you a basic idea how people look at your organization. Now, the next step you could do is start talking to your employees. Yeah. They are really the ones who embody your identity and just ask them what, is, what it's like to really work at this organization. Is there a difference when you first started here, since you've worked here, for instance, one year or two years, and have you seen things that you really like or that you don't like? And yes. what can I do as an employer to improve it? These simple questions will give you a ton of information on how you perceive it as an employer. And that will give you a, a starting point on how to strengthen your employer brand. Yes, thank you. That sounds like a really good way to start. I have one last question, Eve, before we, uh, before we are really wrapping up. And I think it's an interesting one. It's about metrics. What are some metrics that you can use to measure uh, employer branding uh, so can you give us a few examples? Well, there are all kinds of metrics you can use. Um, the, the most kind of metrics that are associated with employer branding are uh, related towards recruitment. So for instance, when you think about cost per hire, 
how difficult or how much will it cost in order to attract a certain person or when somebody leaves. Um, but this is just a part of the entire metrics you should use in order to measure your employer brand. Because recruitment is specifically about attracting new employees, a crucial part, especially if you want to build or enter a new kind of market or you need a new set of different kind of employees. But employer branding is also very much about motivation. It's also very much about retaining the right employees. Mm -hmm. So when you attract new employees, how long are they eager to stay at your organization? Do they stay, for instance, uh, one year or five years? And in these five years, are they able to develop themselves? Um, and these are all kinds of metrics you should weigh in in order to see if your employer brand is successful or not. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Eve, uh, for joining uh, us for this very first episode of Talent Talk Live. Uh, I am turning myself once again to you and that's our audience this morning um, because if you are interested in the topics that uh, Eve and I have been talking about this morning, then you might want to check out our upcoming webinar, which will take place next week on Tuesday, November 3rd uh, at 10 a.m. Central European time. So um, we will share the subscription link in the comments. So please do not hesitate to subscribe and join us because it's a live webinar where Eve and I will be talking more in depth about purpose-driven employer branding. So we'll be looking at some of the developments that have taken place recently. We'll be looking at some of the shifts that have happened. And we'll also look, of course, at how you can create a um, purpose-driven employer brand. So I am very excited about that. Um, Eve will be there, as I said, you can ask him all your questions because we will be live. Um, and then that was it for this very first episode of Talent Talk Live. I hope to see you uh, soon for our next episode. Eve, thank you very much again. My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, I see you next week on Tuesday, that's for sure. And uh, everybody have a really nice Thursday. Thank you very much.